Hey, I'm, uh, I'm actually not Laris, I'm Tim Miko. Um, I'm uh, the deputy in the graphics department at The Post um, and want to introduce you guys to uh, Laris Karklis, who's our senior uh, cartographer on staff, and then Lauren, Lauren Tierney, who's a graphics reporter. Lauren gave a really good presentation this morning, so you probably have already met her. She's also all over the place here in ASIS. Um, before we really get rolling, I'm a, uh, a Greenhorn, first time attendee, so I just wanted to uh, thank everybody for such a, a, a welcoming uh, reception here. It's been the most friendly conference I've ever been to. Um, so we wanted to get this, uh, get this rolling with uh, you know, kind of a, a mantra that we've, we've embraced here at The Post over the last couple years. Um, and it's basically, w we make a ton of maps. We make you know, 15, 20 maps a week, and uh, not all of them are north up. You know, we're used to seeing maps that are like this. Uh, this is a, uh, a map of the Chesapeake Bay. It's a uh, navigational chart for, uh, for uh, maritime uses, I guess. Um, you know, you see the traditional uh, compass there. You got the, the North Star there. It's got magnetic north on there. This is the way we normally see maps, you know, in the, in the wild, I guess. But more and more, this is the way we see maps. Uh, this is a screenshot of Waze on the way down here. Um, and I uh, challenge anybody to tell me which way north is and to then say, does north matter here? And I would argue that north, north doesn't matter here. Um, so much so that we've, we've kind of taken this, this idea and uh, embraced it, hung it up on a, on a pillar in our office, have some nice greenery around it, <laughs> and uh, just kind of use this to kind of remind ourselves that it's not necessarily which way the north arrow is pointed, it's uh, you know, where the story takes us. So in the past couple of years, <clears throat> excuse me, I've kind of been losing my voice I'm talking to all of y'all, it's been a great time. Um, this is my third uh, NASIS conference, but uh, when one of the big lessons that we've learned uh, when, to, when to turn north on its head is uh, when you, when, when you want to guide, much like a GPS device takes you down, if you choose that orientation, you're following the path that, or your destination. We've kind of uh, implemented that thought process into a couple of our graphics. And the first one I wanted to show um, was uh, from last, last summer, uh, the eclipse, uh, uh, traveling the path of the eclipse. <clears throat> So here we uh, start basically what we're making the user um, or uh, you know, the user believe is that they're actually the eclipse and they're traveling over over uh, America and um, and we felt like this was the the most creative way to sort of immerse a reader to really um, think about you know where this where the path was how much uh, what geography it was covering and here we um, only in the beginning of the map did we sort of this is obviously a very quick view and, and the idea of, um, on your own personal use, you could explore it at your own pace, but uh, this is just to give you a, a sense of like the immersion and sort of the way um, north is turned um, and you are traveling along um, the path uh, with the, uh, uh, sort of being the, uh, the, the moon shadow there. Um, uh, sure, yeah. Um, while we were working on that, so that was last summer, obviously, um, published a few weeks before the eclipse appeared, and, um, you know, we all had a lot of fun um, doing a lot of uh, eclipse mapping. Um, but this was a tweet that I really uh, took to heart that came out while I was working on that project, and um, it was from Gretchen Peterson, and, and it really, you know, again, I'm sitting there deep in the weeds trying to work out this raster and working on this big team of people at the Post, and... And, you know, she's like, I believe the best maps take our imaginations for a ride. And I really felt like um, that Eclipse project, um, you know, really, that, that this quote really spoke to me. I screen grabbed it, put it on my desktop, and I'm like, I'm going to remember that one, you know. And, and I wanted to share it with you guys today because I do find it to be uh, a, an inspiration for myself as well. And also sort of a goal when you think about turning north um, on its head and thinking about... Um, what you want the reader to see. Content is king here. And this is a piece that we just published yesterday um, that looks at the 2,000-mile uh, border between the U.S. and Mexico. Um, this is the uh, sort of a very similar experience in that we are forcing the reader to um, travel the length of the border um, from the Pacific Coast all the way to the Gulf of Mexico, giving you a sense, a sort of a long journey take but not too long, but like one that makes you really appreciate um, the geography, the distance, the people, 
all the different elements that come into play when you think about um, this uh, somewhat invisible but yet physical uh, line that um, exists on our landscape today. Um, again, with the orientation here, we sort of advanced a little bit here. We now have a, uh, we have the locator uh, that kind of moves along as you're traveling. And there is, in this piece, um, a north arrow that dynamically turns um, based on the direction of the borderline that we try to keep as straight as possible for the user. This was also done on a mobile, um, designed for a mobile device. And again, the same experience of the borderline always sort of being as best it can in the center without making you seasick. Another neat little feature that also evokes sort of the traveling GPS kind of idea, but um, what really neat development by um, our, my colleague Joe Fox uh, back, at, back at home in DC. Uh, we have sort of like a traveling uh, road signage that helps you also orient beyond just the north arrow, the locator. Um, we have some distances that di dynamically change as you are traveling. Um, this, this piece uh, was again a big labor of love, uh, sort of what I, what I call um, uh, the Royale with cheese experience, you know? <laughs> Because it takes a lot of people, and but you know the basic vision is the same. You know, you you kind of want to, um, you know, by turning, you know, disregarding wh what um, where north is, and we've seen a lot of maps, and in the news business, we've been mapping the Mexico-U.S. border a lot for years, and and it keeps coming up in the news, and I really wanted to. Um, imagine a different way and, and a different appreciation of what, what the border is um, and a more cartographic thing. Um, and it sort of evokes, again, Gretchen's um, 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 tweet there. Um, and so speaking of some maps that we've seen on Twitter that, that aren't ours, but we've seen use a north not up perspective are, um, one of these examples are these two maps, which is a series of, I believe, four or five river maps by uh, Jules Grandin from um, Les Secos. And it, apologies, my pronunciation is wrong. Um, but what's really interesting with these maps is rather than, than them being oriented oriented north up, they're oriented with the headwaters of the river at the top, and so you're following the river down the page. And what's really cool with these maps as well is, um, so, so with the river, with the headwaters north, it really is the, the content, the focus of the river is driving how the map is positioned. And um, one thing also that's really cool with these maps is the locator, rather than having like a symbology for um, that's showing like the direction of the view. The entire globe is turned to show the orientation of the map as well. And um, a really good point that Jules makes in, in his tweet is that um, you know, orientation to the north is only a cartographic convention. Um, but also at times design drives whether north is up or whether it's rotated. Um, so whether you're trying to mimic a certain style or you're trying to um, work with different layout techniques, sometimes rotating the map with north not up um, is an option. Um, one thing that I, I spoke about earlier today was this map of the 1968 riots. And one of the reasons we rotated DC was to mimic this style of these 1960s um, planning maps that a lot of them were rotated with north in the top left corner. So we wanted to match that style and aesthetic um, and of this map actually. So this map and then um, to get, to get that, that design element that, that we wanted. Um, so this is, this is a, a series of maps that we did leading up to Hurricane Florence, which uh, we expected to be a major uh, hurricane, ended up was a major hurricane. Um, so we had this path of the hurricane. We wanted to show basically how wet the mid-Atlantic had been during the summer, and then um, how much extra rain was expected uh, to be uh, dumped onto the region. Um, so this one really, like, we only tweaked it just a little bit, a couple degrees. Um, sideways, um, and, and really we did it to, uh, you know, in the same way that Lauren's map filled that nice space of the page, uh, we kind of took advantage of this uh, ability, I, I guess, to, uh, to turn our maps a little bit so that these could sit side by side and nice and tight. Otherwise, you'd have some weird, awkward white space. Um, you still see the coastline. You still have, um, you know, there's a little north arrow. You still have all the, uh, the states labeled. You know, we think that readers can make this leap and uh, fairly confidently, you know, we give them enough credit that they can figure this out. Um, similarly, we just, um, last week, was it last week, two weeks ago? Hurricane uh, Michael? Yep. Michael, 
came up through um, uh, Mexico Beach, Florida. Some incredible damage there. Um, we we had uh, saw some a viral tweet. Uh, uh, some NOAA imagery was available. We decided to do a, a real quick before and after kind of piece. Um, we stood that up in about three hours online, um, rotated the beach so that it was vertical. You could scroll down the entire beach and uh, get, a, get a sense of scale for the, uh, for the destruction. The images flipped back and forth, so it was nice and easy. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, the managing editor said, hey, that was a great piece. Can you do it in print for Sunday? So we had to make it in print. And so the design of the print page, which you see right here, kind of dictated, like again, that we wanted to turn it vertical and do a real quick side to side kind of thing. Uh, another time, so this is a, a very recent project. We looked at um, North Carolina's congressional districts and how gerrymandered they are. Uh, we used um, 2016 presidential vote total or uh, margins to, to do little uh, graduated circles within each of these districts. And uh, so I, I presented this to my editor, um, and he was like, this is great, but like, you really want to see that rat's nest around Raleigh and Charlotte, you know, all these, these uh, districts that are really bad. And I said, you know, Cheeky, this is, this is as big as I can make it, man. What do you want me to do? And I said, okay, I got, I got a solution. So I just turned it sideways. And by doing this, and so what I did here, you know, I turned it sideways, and it's a little bit weird, but like, we had this little, this little cute little locator map, that, you know, little arrow that kind of shows you, you know, hey, this is North Carolina, but like, follow your eyes and just turn it. And so it allowed you to get in and get a little bit more detail, get, you know, get a little bit tighter with the scale, and actually presented some nice negative space to work in some annotations, um, and it worked out really well. So that's why Cheeky's the, uh, the director. <laughs> hey, Cheeky, if you're watching. Um, so this, <laughs> this was, uh, uh, this is an old project, actually. This came from uh, Laz Gamio, who's now at Axios. Um, but he was kind of the one who really helped kick off this, uh, this theory of North as a societal construct within the post. Um, he made this project, and it's uh, three level, or two different variables, uh, actually three variables, four variables, a lot of variables within the election maps. And uh, he, he turned, this, turned this map sideways, mostly for the same reason, just so he could be uh, nice and big with it um, and let, let users and readers um, you know, see for themselves all the little nuances. This is at the county level, I believe. Um, and this also ran in print uh, as a double truck, so, or two facing pages. So one, one map on one side, and he uh, repeated this theme with another type of map on the other side, both turned vertically. Right, one other, one other thing about uh, this election map was that I think that, um, uh, Um, just simply that, uh, you know, you're competing with a lot of other media organizations with election results. Uh, so um, a little advantage there to, you, you don't want to go overboard, but uh, it definitely was a head turner and got a lot of attention. Uh, on breaking news events, again, um, this was a um, unfortunate uh, plane disappearance over the Mediterranean Sea. This is a map made on deadline um, for the desktop version. And then you turn north to the uh, uh, east and uh, leverage your space that way for your mobile device. This is something that we have to consider for pretty much every project we produce, uh, desktop, mobile, and tablet. Um. And then um, there's some cases where north really doesn't matter, either um, depending on content or what you're trying to do, it's, or depending on if you want to do something with orientation. Um, it's, sometimes it doesn't matter. Um, so this was a map that I worked on a couple months ago. It was for a travel story on the New York City High Line. And this map, I think, rotated three different ways throughout the production of it. Um, at one point, it was north up. But then to get kind of the clean city grid, um, rotated it to the side. And we ended up with this final one because actually, um, the for the travel story, the author was writing starting from the Whitney Museum of American Art on the left and then ending near Hudson Yards on the right. So actually, this map allowed to kind of more follow from left to right um, what the what the writer was was discussing 
Um, and then another example, so depending on if you want to get a certain orientation, so this was a map that we made um, for breaking news when the car fire broke out near Redding, California. And this one very easily could have been, it's, it's pretty close to north, north up, and it, it very well could have been, but we wanted to get a little bit more perspective on that Mount Shasta in the background just to get a little bit more depth. And, um, and actually this one was a recommendation from Laris to add a little bit of shadow behind Mount Shasta just to get a little, little bit of pop behind there. Um, yeah. And as you know, with 3D perspective maps, um, turning uh, north on its side isn't really that unusual. Here's another example of that. So um, one other thing, just really quickly, was when I took on this project and was looking for examples of this, I really came across a, a sort of a, a north uh, societal construct style that uh, I, I deem to call the feeling north ornery. Um, some maps are just mean and ornery, and you got a problem with that, you know? Uh, and a good example of that here, and this is just, I don't know, it was just a theme that I found in, in my archive, but uh, you know, here's this pipeline map that uh, I guess I got um, tasked to make on a Friday pretty late in the day. And I was like, you know, oh, and by the way, uh, well, I was like, you know what, what if I just turned it on its side, you know, and just, you know, publish this map this way, you know, and plus it's really good for social media. You can see the entire extent of it, you know, leading up to Norfolk here. And, you know, I got to admit, though, this is probably not a good idea. <coughs> this was a case where my orner orneriness uh, didn't work out for the betterment of the reader. But, uh, you know, I tried. <laughs> uh, here's another example of, uh, of another uh, pretty interesting map of a, a librarian who commutes to work by boat and bike uh, to the Library of Congress. And, um, again, here, probably pushed it a little bit um, too far, but uh, you, know, you know, I'm willing to admit that. But, uh, but it does lead you in a linear way, a little bit better than uh, had I just kept the orientation north up for DC. Um, but I think if you got a big, you know, clear north arrow, state labels, you know, I don't know. I still like this map, but I do admit that perhaps it's a little bit too far. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> Oh, there is one more of <laughs> some more North ornery, orneriness. Uh, here's the story about uh, uh, a, a, an island dispute uh, between U.S. and Canada during this recent uh, ca uh, trade debate, and and uh, uh, so I, I kind of had to like fit a lot of information in a small space. I didn't have a lot of room, and so again, I sort of leveraged that North Atlantic uh, sea coast, turning it on its side a little bit maintaining some pretty well-known uh, cities so that I think you can pretty quickly orient yourself, and then added a, a much closer in um, image right next to it to really um, show you the, the, the disputed island that was at issue here. You need to know where it is, but you also kind of are very curious about what it looks like. When I sent it to the uh, reporter, I got this uh, email back and was like, hey, it looks great, particularly that detail of Machaya Seal Island. But can you flip the first map to the right so that it aligns more with conventional maps of the area? It looks sort of strange now. Canada is to the east and the north, not due north of Maine. Thanks. So I, you know, sort of thought about it, took a look at this map, and was like, well, you know what? I think I'm going to keep it this way. You know, I don't think it's a big stretch. <laughs> so anyway, the power of cartography. I really appreciate all your time. And, you know, by the way, if you... Uh, um, really, you know, it's, again, this is sort of a mantra that we've been sort of, you know, we don't do this to every map. These are some of the highlights of these uh, types of maps that we've been experimenting with. But uh, please, if you uh, have one, I know that I've seen a lot of great examples from um, all the other uh, media organizations that have great cartographers um, really experimenting with that, with, especially in the mobile view. But um, if, you, if you do make a map that uh, sort of flips the convention on its head, please uh, tweet it out with this uh, uh, hashtag um, and so that we can all see the reactions to it. Thank you very much.